Got two turtles and, uh, and they both died. And, you know, uh, I just remember that when I was looking at the aquarium, it's funny how they look at me like I was God. And uh, it kind of reminded me of the episode in the, uh, in the movie, The Truman Show, it was really surreal. And they're like, dude, dude, birds wonder where the bird god or seals, wonder where the seal god is. And it kind of made me wonder, like, what are we looking for? Because, like, the God, to me, is like the goodness in you, your behavior. It's not something that's outside, it's within you. But that's just my opinion. And everybody has an opinion. So, uh, I remember as a background actor on Jerry Seinfeld and, uh, uh, George Alexander. He always so nice. I remember I even said to Jerry, he likes sign cereal a lot. And one told him, it's not a craft service. And it's like, I talked to him, like, hey, Jerry, I like your show. I haven't really watched it a lot. He met me saying it, but I'm going to start watching a lot more now. And he just looked at me and smiled. And then Jason Alexander was so great. Oh, man. I remember I was in the line to eat. And I actually sat next to him, I seen food. He's so famous, so cool, and down to earth. And uh, I remember the, the pretty, attractive white woman. I guess you could tell by the way I act. And I was like, uh, she said, well, you like white meat or dark meat? And I said, um, I didn't say anything perverted. I was like, oh, white meat, please. And I, and Jason, I was saying, no, uh, he just smiled. And he was a great guy. Anyway, George Clooney, he, was, uh, he loves basketball. So I was on the background actor on the TV show, the popular TV show, ER. One of the happiest memories of my mom. She said she jumped on the bed and saw me and started screaming. She couldn't believe it. It's like surreal to think those things. And uh, so anyway, we shoot shooting around. Just all of us, um, background actors, the principal actors on the ER. And uh, everybody just shooting around. I remember George Clooney, I was standing that close to him. But he like took a shot. I put my hand up like we're going to block it or something. And, um, you know, it's far away. But I still make it. And he doesn't care less, but it was funny to me. Anyway, when I was a kid, I was a Jackson 5 fan. I love Michael Jackson music. Oh, my God. It was like the first person I idolized. You know, there's like Dr. J and uh, Barack Obama and Will Smith, Harvey and uh, Kobe. And, and I said idolized. I just admire people that special ed, people that I wish I was that cool or that, you know, Image that you look at other people like that's an example I want to be like. You know, President Obama, I said. And, uh, did I? and anyway, uh Al Muhammad Ali, you know, people, Malcolm X, I like Bruce Lee, people, George Carlin, people that I like that uh, go against the grain and uh, they expose a lot of stuff that's like, come on, you know what I mean? It's a lot of BS in the world and you could like be a little truth teller, that makes me happy, an example to me. Anyway, so Jackson 5 was a big deal, mom bought me magazines all the time, I was spoiled as a kid and um, I don't know, my family's boozy. And she didn't buy me a magazine a couple of times. I was like, some man, like, oh, I hate you. I'm, I'm, and I was like, remember, <laughs> like a Timber Chantry. And I was like, yeah, that's not cool. And uh, maybe that's why I had my way too much, why I didn't really understand things as well. Because anyway, so I was 19, homeless in Harrisburg, walking by myself. And a little kid drove past on a bus. And mostly all white kids, I think it was. He yelled the window, nigga. And for some reason, I guess maybe I'm just mad about stuff. And I was ready to throw a rock at the bus. And I was like, Stu, are you... Some, well, that's impossible. Never think something like that. But I did for a second. <laughs> so I can imagine going like in some major prison. And I'm here for murder. I'm here for, you know, uh, armed robbery. What you in here for? Oh, yeah. I thought if I get a school bus and a little white kid got his eye blind, and like, that would not have been good. That would not. So anyway, I, to me, I would, it just made me laugh, you know, but it's, that's not funny. But then uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the TV show, a cop that sh uh, slapped a baton on his hand. I was his mom's social worker, so I thought that was cool, Tibbet. And I had a lot of connections with uh, Will Smith from uh, the guy that played his brother, Ali. I know from college. He gave me a ride home on the set of, uh, from the the state. That's my roommate for Harvey. I asked him, you want to come in? He said, I'm tired for the day. And that had been some uh, uh, Tina. I used to drive people from Lincoln University, and I was pretty known for that, and typing papers on how to type it fast. There's two things I did, like a side hustle in college. And I remember driving uh, Tina to the Thirsty Station, and she had a kid by Jazzy Jeff. And um, there's so many. I have a lot of connections. But anyway, uh, Dancing with Tyra Banks. I was on a movie set with Bill Bellamy and uh, Tyra Banks on Love Stinks. And uh, I got a single out as a background actor, so I had to stay behind. And it's only one background actor that did that. So I'm very energetic. And I remember uh, Tyra Banks, she said something like just playing around with something. Sometimes she said the word nigger. And, you know, it's a group of white people. And she was like, oh, it was like kind of embarrassed. I didn't mean to do that. And I came up there. It's one of the greatest things I did as a background actor. And uh, I was like, oh, I like, pretend I was like Jesse Jackson. He's famous in the 1970s. He talked fast. And he was all like, and I was like, no, we were not uh, take this injustice any longer. We didn't. I did that for an entire bank. All these white producers. And, yeah, I, I do feel good. I am kind of bold. And I think I just crave attention. I think people who do it feel that way because it, it compensates for what they didn't have. Or I didn't have that family, uh, strong family background. I mean, they were boozy, but I never, it's like I never was close to them. 
So it's like getting attention to kind of like supplements that in the way. I don't know. That's my way to analyze myself. Then I met Jerry Springer and uh, he was cool. I was on the Jerry Springer movie, Rainmaster. And it's weird to show me in the trailer of the movie. But then in, I guess they made more trailers and they did it with Armageddon too. I was on the wedding scene with Ben Affleck and Liv Tyler. And Liv Tyler, we, uh, Harvey and I met in the mall one time. And she thought Harvey's a fan. Of he said, no, no, I miss, no, I'm in business too. And, and, and he explained it. He's like, yo, I know the same people. And so, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that was cool. Anyway, she was real nice. And uh, I talked to her briefly on um, Armageddon and Ben Affleck again. And then uh, they show me in the scene. And um, But they made three DVDs for Armageddon. And the one I'm in is an European DVD. And uh, uh, Joey, uh, what's his name? Johnny Tom, professional magician. He performed for uh, Barbara Streisand. He was, as a background actor, he, me and him was like, like class clowns. We got along real good. And, um, wild, wild conversation. He's a cool dude. I ain't seen him since them days, but, uh, all the best to him. And then, anyway, uh, he told me he saw my entertainment tonight. And I wasn't seeing Armageddon. I never saw that clip. Anyway, oh, yeah, as I got older, oh, my God, scared getting older. You never know what's going to happen the next day. But, uh, I remember when I turned 55. I'm 59 now. And I looked in the, uh, mailbox and I saw the mail. And I said AARP, and I thought it was the neighbor's mail with the older than me. And they, oh god, they were so noisy when I lived in Natasha. And then they saw me single, so they kind of quiet down. I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah, you doing? I'm like, oh god. But anyway, that's old. I don't want to talk about the past. That past is over. It's just memories for me. But uh, uh so it was actually mine that kind of shocked me. And uh, I remember when I was younger, I was in Covenant House, and uh, uh you know, I, I didn't get along with my family, and so I was staying in Covenant House, and we were staying in Times Square, and I had the movies there no more. But they had movies, the actual movies you could see, and uh, you see what time it's going to end. And sometimes we can stand back of the, we can stand back of the movie theater, and people open the back door all the time. Every the movie ends, and we just grab the door and just go and see a movie for free. Anyway, that's enough memories for this video.